It is said that we are our DNA, that our genome defines us. And that's true, it is the language in which the instructions for life are encoded. But this also means that it can determine if we are going to suffer certain diseases in the future. If we are born with some alterations in our genes, this can give us an increased risk of becoming ill at a certain moment in our life. And these alterations will not only affect us, but also our relatives, our children, It is part of our inheritance because they are transmitted from generation to generation. And what can we do? It's in our genes, so it's already written, we must accept it. Well, there's something we can do. We can do more research. In our group, we are focused on hereditary colorectal cancer. Around 15-20% to 20% of colorectal cancer cases have a generic predisposition. But only in a small 5% of those cases, we are able to identify which generic alteration is the responsible for the onset of the disease. The risk of developing colorectal cancer can be influenced by germline genetic factors. These genetic factors are changes in the DNA sequence that can affect genes. Depending on the risk conferred on the individual to develop cancer, these changes can be classified as high, moderate or low risk variants. Low risk variants have a high prevalence in the general population. However, the risk of colorectal cancer associated with each of these variants is low. So, how could these variants increase the risk of developing colorectal cancer? Well, For years, scientists have hypothesized that the accumulation of these low-risk variants in an individual, along with the interaction of some environmental factors such as diet or lifestyle, might partly explain the increased risk that some individuals have of developing colon cancer. Part of the work we do in our lab together with other collaborators is to develop a model that can allow us to identify individuals who have a higher risk of developing colorectal cancer based on low-risk variants and environmental data of each individual. Being able to identify this subgroup of individuals allows us to improve colon cancer screening programs and offer those individuals a better management. Here in the genetic predisposition to gastrointestinal cancer group, we also look for where and high penetrant variants in genes that might predispose to colorectal cancer. That means when they affect the function of some important genes through cell balance, they can also confer a high impact in the chances people have to develop colorectal cancer in the future. And what we try to do is to search for high-risk variants in families with a familiar aggregation to colorectal cancer by doing some steps. First, whole exome sequence to access the patient's genome, second, prioritization of the most likely pathogenic variants, and finally, the functional assessment of the real impact of those variants on cellular function. By doing so, we hope we can contribute to the knowledge of inherited colorectal cancer, improve high-risk patient screening, and also to the prevention of colorectal cancer.